Between Lake Constance and the highest mountain in eastern Switzerland, St. Gallen nestles in a green high valley. A famous small town with a long history. Crooked alleys with late Gothic half-timbered houses, which, with their magnificent splendour, aureoles reveal the wealth of the rich builders. In between, there are always small squares, often with fountains at their centre. Since the Middle Ages, the nearby Lake Constance and the River Rhine have been connecting transport routes. And in 1454, the city was incorporated into the Swiss Confederation. It was the time of detachment from the ruling monastery and the beginning of civil rights, such as the right to be prosecuted by one's own judge and the beginnings of urban legislation. A municipal council was founded and in the second half of the 14th century, a mayor and guilds were mentioned for the first time. And the Waghaus also served as a warehouse for goods. In the Textile Museum, you can learn about the invention of embroidered fabrics, see the world's first embroidery machine, and a collection of models, pattern books and designs. Already in the Middle Ages, the so-called White City was of great importance for the production of fabrics and the sand garland lace and embroidery have been in demand as export goods for centuries. The economic boom in the 19th century brought wealth and expansion to the city. Alongside which the conversion to cotton, mechanization and chemical colors were mastered. The Evangelical Reformed Church of St. Lawrence is located in the centre of the old town and even today it points to the formal rivalry between the Protestant city and the Catholic Gallus Monastery. Today's neo-Gothic building was first erected around 850, presumably as the burial chapel of the martyr Lorenzius. In the 13th century, the inhabitants of the town wanted their church to be independent from the Catholic abbot in the monastery. Thus, the Protestant city church was built directly next to the cathedral and the monastery district. The tower of the church can be climbed and the effort rewarded with wonderful views of the monastery and old town. Through the Karl Gate, the monastery district can be entered. The only preserved and most valuable of the once eight St. Gallen city gates, next to sections of the medieval city fortifications. Behind is the area of the Catholic monastery that was separated from the adjacent reformed city in the 16th century by a separation wall. The Gallus Square adjoins the monastery district. Craftsmen and people who did not belong to the monastic community settled here. Many of the half-timbered houses have preserved their original character with bay windows. 
And such creativity knew no bounds. In the middle of the square, the fountain should remind of the Holy Gallus. It was at Gallus Square that the urban development started, and the residential and commercial buildings of wealthy merchants can be found here even now. In the year 612, the Irish travelling monk Gallus was on search for the ideal place for a hermit cell. According to legend, he fell into a bush of thorns at the edge of a nearby gorge. Then, as he encountered a bear, he decided to settle in this place. Years later, a Benedictine monastery was established there, which became one of the most important cultural centres of the Western world in the Middle Ages. The monumental cathedral was preceded by several other buildings, until finally the dominating double tower and the splendidly decorated façade were built. Above the tomb of Gallus, there is a lavish Rococo-styled interior. And the dome in the middle of the church shows paradise with a gathering of 60 saints. Every corner seems solemn and is intended to lead the visitor to faith. The altar landscape with the high altar and six altars is separated from the main nave by a fence. The artists responsible were the great masters of their time, and they created a harmoniously coordinated unity with stuccos, paintings and furnishings. But the reason the monastery of St. Garland became world famous was due to the Abbey Library, which is housed in a Baroque hall. With fittings with gilded carvings and parquet made of wood from fir trees, the vault with stuccos and frescoes, but also Egyptian sarcophagi next to 175,000 book volumes, 900 ivory plates and many manuscripts. The scent of knowledge and the harmony of the spines create an extraordinary atmosphere. The Abbey Library is the oldest in Switzerland and one of the oldest and largest monastery libraries in the world. St. Garlan, with all its splendour, reflects the golden age of the monastery, but also the success of both industry and the bourgeoisie. <laughs>